Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome to this special layout design mini series from town to railroad to layout. In this series, we're going to design an entire end scale layout based on a prototype railroad. In the first video, we dissected the town of Cochrane. We reviewed all the elements and allocated all the tracks. And in part two, we started to fill in the branch line. What towns, industries, and cities are there? And we started to look at traffic patterns to generate some traffic. And in this last long awaited part of the series, everything is going to come together. We're going to take all these towns, cities, and traffic patterns and squeeze it in a one bay garage in an end scale layout with three levels. Let's have a look after you subscribe to my channel. Thank you. And now here we go. Zooming into Coltrane, here is the diagram if you remember it from the very first video. This is quite a handful. So we're going to make this and let this fit into the space. So then onto the space. This is a one bay garage. I turn on some rulers. It's 18 by 10 feet. And I've also thought about the maximum train length, which is going to be one locomotive plus 1580 foot cars. So here it is. This is 70 inches, one locomotive plus 1580 foot cars. So we came to the following a bench work design. We're going to fill these spaces in later, but this is what we came up to. It is a bit of a compromise and a squeeze to get through this area here, but that's just so we can fit in this helix here on the other right and have a nice lengthy section here at the bottom as well. There's still plenty of space here where the door is and plenty of aisle space here in the middle. So zooming in a bit uh, onto the story and this is here in the north is where Cotrain is going to be located. So looking at the diagram, the first compromise is going to be how we're going to fit everything in there. So looking at Cotrain from above, you immediately notice this lumber uh, process facility takes a lot of space and there's no way we can typically uh, size that in our layout. But what I came up with is to have a, a helix here on the right. And on top of the helix is a massive space that we can use for this uh, lumber yard. So what does that mean? It means the lumber yard has to be uh, south of the railroad. So what I ended up doing is flipping the whole situation. So now the uh, lumber yard is on the south. This yard is to the north of the main. So is the workshop and the terminal. Next thing you notice is uh, this is a quite densely packed area from north to south. It's quite wide. We have this whole wood processing facility, then we have the yard, then we have a terminal, then we even have this workshop or a terminal for the passenger cars. Moving down the line a bit here where the station is, it's a bit narrow. It's only a station and a few tracks. So what I ended up doing is moving the terminal and the workshop to the left, just to spread out the trackage a bit over the entire length of Cotrain. So let me draw in the track that I came up with, and let me go into turn on the scenery as well. Let's just go through the full glory every step at a time. So let's get our bearings. Here is the main line that goes from this end to that end. This is green line track right here. The tracks to the north, this is the yard, and then south of the yard, we put the massive lumber facility. As it takes a lot of space, there's a lot of room for scenery here, because there's actually not a lot of track. It's just this one track here, uh, a spur here, and a spur here that leads into the um, engineered wood products building. And here are the team tracks. One, two, three, four. I managed to squeeze in. I don't want to put too many tracks here. I mean, we have, yes, we have a large yard, but there's quite already a few uh, different industries here in Cotrain, and there's quite a lot of industries with a lot of trackage down the line. Here is a ramp of one of the team tracks as discussed in an earlier video. One original track band feature that I wanted to preserve that's also in the prototype is that you have to cross several tracks if you want to get from the yard to the industry. So if you have some cars here in the yard and you would first probably go to this track then back up across the main line here and then go into the industry like that that would be a nice uh, operational feature because then you need to have time and clearance on the main line to do this and that last but not least but as you have probably already noted i did move the terminal track edge around a bit this is not really how it is in the prototype but i thought this would represent the prototype well so here we have the engine facility i think this gives a good impression of what it looks like in real life and then here on the left is the passenger terminal so again it's not behind each other because we don't really have the depth to stack it. I spread it out and moved it after each other, uh, so to speak. One key feature is this a workshop building and all these platforms here that are just a bit randomly a space to park and I guess maintain uh, passenger cars on. Also, the Y is here, but this just goes off layout. It is represented with these two tracks and, and these turnouts right here, because I think that, that does have some operational benefit, but the, the Y itself is just disappearing into the bushes. So let's continue. As you see in the prototype, there is the main line, there is a, a road crossing, and then there 
is the Y where the main line uh, continues in this direction and the R branch uh, branches off in this direction. And then there is the world famous beer shop that I have modeled in here as well. Just ignore these helixes for a minute. I'll come back to that in a minute. The line disappears behind the helix and then into a, a tunnel, let's say, and pops up out of the layout here. Our prototype actually has a lot of bridges and trestles. So I wanted to include one of them in this section right here. This is just a scenic area. There's a nice loop, it climbs up the hill, and it comes here into Fraserdale. So if we can fill this area with a nice trestle scene, I'm all for that. Then we come into Fraserdale with uh, put three tracks in there, and then the Y, again, is modeled here, but it's not on the layout. There's no purpose. We don't have space for it. There's too much space to put all these Ys everywhere. And I don't think it has a lot of operational pleasure to really have it. So that's why I model it, but we're not going to use it. I did put the uh, substation here just as a reference to the actual purpose of the original uh, yard that's here. Coming back to our schematics, here you see on the right, this is what we discussed. Coat train, Island Falls, that's where the, the trestle would be, and then Fraser, Dale, that's all on the layout tier or deck number one. Now on to the helix. So coming out of the helix from here, we enter the layout on the top. This is the high level where also the uh, top of the dam is, the Auto Rapids Dam. We immediately appear and enter this uh, large lumber operation. A lot of space is dedicated to this lumber operation as we also have a large lumber mill. So it would only seem fitting to balance these, these two off and to really represent this industry on this layout. Key things to note is this uh, siding right here where you can do a run around and that will be needed because we have one trailing edge here and two leading edges there. So this will be a fun little uh, side job to, to switch with a local switcher for this industry right here as also discussed in the, the previous video. And then we disappear here in the tunnel which is also the lower level and lower level of the dam. We dive underneath the track and then go behind the helix once again. Then we slowly wind into one. See. So guys, it's time for a small intermezzo and apology to all the 1,481 inhabitants of Moussoni, because the town is actually called Moussoni, and I've been pronouncing it as Monacy all this time, and I've been spelling it incorrectly as well. It's with one M and one N. So every time you hear me say Monacy, please think Moussoni. Every time you see my spelling with an extra N, just imagine it's not there. Zooming out a bit, uh, Monacy, before we zoom in again, the the key features in terms of layout is that this is a very long and straight stretched town with the railway uh, on one side of it. Uh, other key features are obviously the yard, we have a passing siding and a Y, and then the industries more or less connect to that. The key ones would be the uh, seaport and the airport in the north, and then here uh, quite a few tracks for some kind of industry that is unspecified at this moment. So going back to the layout, that's what I wanted to, to depict. So you see everything is as long and straight uh, as possible, also the village slash town that is in here is quite a lot of long uh, straight roads. But the original yard is actually quite intact with with all its tracks. There's the industry here in the north as well and then the station here in the south. But if you start counting the tracks there's actually not that many there. One is for the station, one could be for the passenger station, then we have one for the industry in the north and then here trains can spot as well and then you need two clear tracks for a run around and then you have one track left for some storage. Then here is the track with the ram as you remember. Moving along on a bit to the right. This is where it gets interesting. The Y that is is there, I totally neglected it. There just was no space to really neatly fit it in there. But I did keep the core operational features. But one of that is the ability to do a runaround. That can be from here and then on to here. And then from here, I launch all the other tracks. So up north here are two tracks that go to the airport. This is staged, so you would just park your cars here. Then here we have two uh, long tracks as we saw for the undefined industry. Well, I defined it as a uh, oil dealer because in these parts of the countries, I guess there's a lot of oil left to heat the buildings in the winter. Then we need an extra track here just to be able to do the runaround. And then here we dive into the fun part of the city. There's a lot of scenic possibilities here. If you look at the prototype, you see that one track goes to the south and it connects to the seaport. And the other track is actually here uh, along a, a parallel road to the north and then connects to the industries. I actually had that in here first. The track was, was up here to the north and then would uh, serve the, the back end of these buildings. I just thought it would be a nicer scene to have this track on the front so you can actually see what happens and you can see the structures. And then you have a, a scene where you have one track, you have a road, and then you have this busy port scene. I thought that would combine to be a really nice looking scene. So let me know in the comments below if you if you like this compromise or if you would have done it differently or where you would like 
to see the focus if this was your layout. Back to the diagram, we discussed lumber yards, auto rapids, Montessi, and the airport, and also the seaport that's here. So now let's talk about the two elephants in the room, the helixes, and how do they incorporate in this diagram. Let's just go through a step by step. Here is deck number one. They see on the right, we see co train again, and there was one track that leads into this helix on the right. I drew it in red, as red is going to be the mainline trackage and the track that we're not really going to model. Remember, we're modeling the branch line from co train to Montessi and not the, the main line that's in red so it's on the right and then here on the left it disappears in on the left and then here on the left as well you see there's a, a double helix so let me try to explain that here is again the town of Cotrain. so here we have y where our layout branches in this direction and the main line in red branches in here as you see it dives immediately into this helix as where our line still continues goes all the way here goes to the Graysdale and then joins the helix in the outer layer so that's what you see here the, the red line branches off and immediately dives into the helix so that's this dotted line that's where our line still continues with the dam and then fraser dale and then only then we dive into this helix so then let's go to deck number two the lumber yard we can just have a quick look at the layout so here is deck number two here is our helix and note this inner track does not branch off this just goes straight from the upper deck to the lower deck is this does not have a branch off or anything on this middle so back to your diagram you see that this inner line here in the red does not disconnect but it is there and then our uh, branch line does disconnect here lumber yard and so on but then we have deck number three what is to see there it's just a staging here finally the inner line from the helix number two unfolds and enters the staging and helix number one that is uh, comes straight from co-train also disconnects and goes into the staging so then to complete the diagram and the layout this is deck number three so the inner track from the helix connects to the staging and helix number one is also connected to the staging so here we see the inner track slowly disconnects from the helix and then goes into two yards the east and the west yard and then it connects again to the other helix these yards are just placeholders for the minute just to prove that it does fit some way shape or form i'll probably, I'll probably try to make it a bit more symmetrical and then nicely aligned uh, later on so one debate you can have is is why do you have this staging all the way on deck three why don't you not make it above deck one let's call it deck zero opposed to now having your trains go all the way through deck two just to get to deck three well this is a matter of preference for me i want deck one to be on a chest height and then deck two to be on waist height and then deck three will be on let's say a knee height that's how i like it so that deck three when you're sitting on a chair you can still comfortably access the staging but to appreciate scenery and the trains you need to have them on higher heights you can however put deck three in the sky as some people have it or almost against the ceiling so you would need like a step stool to, to reach it that's not really what i want and i want to avoid that so this is the, the solution we came up with one advantage is uh, as well of this configuration is that deck number one there's no helixes going up and on helix one i actually made a lid here where i see next one of the uh, many dams that is there so let's have a closer look at the various uh, gradients and, and, and the helixes themselves i took these helix dimensions from uh, ron's train and things youtube channel he has great videos videos about his layout and all things model railroading and end scale thank you ron and there's also a great video where he explains the helixes that he makes so he uses a 22 and a half inch radius at two percent slope with three inch between the decks so i just followed his best practices blindly and incorporated that in here let me zoom in a bit what actually is happening in this double track helix and how does it all figure out with the uh, different heights well, the first track comes in here, the outer track at height is zero, and it immediately starts to descend in the helix as it has to dive underneath itself later on. So halfway through the helix right here, we're also halfway through the height, so at minus 3.8 centimeters. So that basically means when the outer track joins the helix, it has to also be at minus 3.8 centimeters because it has to dive underneath here, the inner track. You don't want to have two split level helixes with the inner and outer track. You just want to keep them on the same level. But to get here at minus 3.8, Eight, let's just go backwards is actually a bit tricky so that basically means that this whole Fraserdale section also has to be at minus 3.8 and on top of that we also have to dive underneath itself right here so continuing here we are then at minus 3.8 at the beginning of Fraserdale as well and we have a 2% grade downwards to minus 7.8 this is the lowest point and then we actually slowly climb up again to minus 6 all the way to 0 to get back on co-train height so this is a bit of a roller coaster I must, must admit but this is all to sacrifice so we have this a uh, nice long stretch and scenic stretch right here for Fraser. Let it be noted that this can be filled in in different ways but I chose to do it this way. 
So that's that when it comes to the different inclines and, and slopes that I use. So that brings us to the end of the line of the Cotrain to Monacy edition of the miniseries from town to railroad to layout. Hope you guys and gals enjoyed watching this miniseries. It was certainly a lot of fun and very interesting for me to put it all together and to do the research. In the description down below, you can find where you can download the entire track plan and all the diagrams as well. If you know of a branch line that you want to have translated into your own layout, please contact me and we can make that happen. I'm working on some additional and complimentary videos to this miniseries, but this is work in progress as I'm still doing the research. Thank you all again for watching as it is you, the viewer, that makes this channel for what it is. I hope you truly did enjoy it. Don't miss out on the bloopers at the end of this video and I'll see you next time. That's all for today. Thank you. Bye bye. Musoni. Moonsoni? And it's Musoni. Musoni and not Monacy. Musoni? So every time you hear me say Monacy, please think Musoni. 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 Without an end. Town is called Musoni. Musoni. Mu. Sini. Musoni. Musoni. Monacy. Monacy. Musoni. Just imagine it's not there.